We have 74 in the waiting room. Jesus. <laughs> Admitting them now. This is the Disney New Mutants press conference. Oops, I need to change my back. Hi, everyone. Uh, just a quick reminder for all the press to please uh, mute your mics. Uh, keep your cameras off. Oh, We're about to start the press conference. I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to Ash, who will be moderating. Hi, everyone. My name is Ash Carlson from Entertainment Tonight, and it is an honor to be your moderator for the New Mutants press conference. I am so excited. Please join me in virtually welcoming the cast. First up, director Josh Boone, Maisie Williams, Anya Taylor-Joy, mm -hmm. Charlie Heaton, Alisi Braga, Blue Hunt, and Henry Zaga. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Hi, everyone. Hello. Hello. How's everyone doing? Good. Very good. 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 Yeah. Well, congrats on the film finally being released. It's been quite a ride. Many release <laughs> changes, a merger, a global pandemic. I mean, this has been a journey. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but, but I will say the fans have been really unwavering throughout this whole thing. I mean, from the art, the make. outpouring of love you guys have received, what has the support from the fans meant to you guys? Maisie, let's start with you. It's so wonderful. I think like, you know, we had, there was a lot of uncertainty with this film and when it was going to get released and to know that there was an audience that was still willing to, to wait as long as it took. And, and even through this pandemic have been so supportive and um, yeah, it's just been really exciting. I can't wait for people to finally see it. They're, they're my favorite fans because they, they actually don't complain. They just do really cool artwork uh, of the <laughs> characters. So there's probably like a hundred plus pieces of artwork that fans have done that uh, I'd still like to figure out a way to do a book of. Uh, go get permission from everybody and do a book. That would be amazing. Is, is there anything that anyone has received, like whether somebody's like DM'd you or tweeted you or maybe even stopped you on the street pre-pandemic that has stuck out to you in terms of like fan interactions? Anyone have anything that comes to mind? I think like for us to be one of the most watched panel, I think like it was it was on Comic Con, right? I think that was so sweet yeah. to hear when Josh gave us that those news. I think for me it was, wow, it's amazing that the fans are so loyal and so excited mm -hmm. even with all the wait. I don't know. For me, it was a great you know thing right before we finally released to listen to. I don't know for you guys, but that was something that yeah. really. I remember when we, me, Elise, uh, Josh, and Nate went to uh, Brazil's Comic Con, and I oh, think yeah. that was the year that they sold more tickets than San Diego's. Yeah. And as soon as we stepped on stage, it felt like I don't know, like we we're the Beatles. <laughs> so I am, but like they love this, these characters. The closest we'll ever get to be Beatles. <laughs> <laughs> it was like really it was an outpour of love and you know uh, dedication to these characters. Um, it was really cool to see. Yeah. Well, Josh, let's clarify something really quick. Let's get this out of the way. There was a lot of talk about da 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 reshoots. So, <laughs> how much has the movie evolved from when you shot to now that it is coming out? How much has it changed? We reshot the movie four or five times, like every scene in it. All, but no, I'm kidding. I, there, there, we never ever had a. We never did reshoots. Uh, you were we were supposed to do reshoots. People in general, movies do reshoots or pickups or things like that. But because of the merger. Once it was done, it was done. So we did never went back and did a reshoot. So we were always using uh, the same footage and the same material uh, from the start of editing and all the way to the end of it. Mm, okay, clarified. So this is the first horror thriller set in Marvel's X-Men universe. It's also the first big studio film to come out after months and months of quarantining. And it's about people trapped in somewhere that they can't get out. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, timely! Really timely. Yeah. Does it does it hit yeah. different now, Alisi? <laughs> uh, I mean, I think so. I think people are kind of going to connect more with the characters' feeling than never. <laughs> we uh, I we thought made... about it that way before, but it kind of makes perfect sense now. I feel like the movie's supposed to come out now. I think people are in a very different That's... way. That's why um, the universe made this movie wait was because they knew they needed to wait for a time when nobody could leave their houses. Because I mean, we went and made this about kids trapped inside this institution, this facility. And then Henry and I went and made a, a, a show about a pandemic. So 
it's i think we need to stop making things that could happen in real life <laughs> we're getting too topical on our projects it's yeah, getting a little... yeah it's too topical we need to go for, for full fantasy next time <laughs> yeah well, unlike most big, you know, studio superhero films, this one was filmed on location in this like old psychiatric hospital. Is that right? Yeah. Which I imagined is an absolute playground for ghosts. But um, how did filming on this lo in this location inform your performance? And especially at night, Henry, let's go with you on this one. You said Henry or Ania, sorry. I said Henry, sorry. Henry. I mean, to me, um, it was more of about the smell i think there was something really creepy about the smell it just got into your soul before you <laughs> thought about it um, but i don't know it was it was spooky and uh i was also having a blast filming the movie so it was kind of hard to to feel bad about being in this in this place so i i, I think i'm the worst person to ask this question to. <laughs> i was you know the class clown i guess just enjoying myself and having fun <laughs> yeah I think I think like filming there really helped to get the feel of like a kind of reality of it, like having actual walls and actual energy for a film like this. And and like it felt kind of like in a way that we were doing an independent film sometimes because yeah. we were on location. So it wasn't oh, yeah. only blue screens and creating. Of course, we had that, but also it's it brings a sense to it. And like like I think Henry said, like a, a sense of smell, a sense of, you know, real feel. And filming at night was kind of scary. I wouldn't walk by myself. Yeah, lots of crew members no had way. weird, yeah. There were several crew members weird who had stuff. weird experiences there, had to be walked to their car at night because they were scared to walk there by themselves after they'd been in the buildings all day. Uh, yeah, it was, people definitely yeah. had weird encounters. And the yeah, groundskeeper that worked there for years had some really awful stories to tell us <laughs> why yeah, we should I'm, walk alone at night around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember him putting his arm around me and he was like, see that basketball court over there? I was like, yeah, he goes, you know, they, 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 the, the state made that for, for little Jimmy when he came here. I was like, oh, they made it for a kid. That's so sweet. And they were like, he stabbed his family. And I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy. Oh. Good. Yeah. Well, beyond, uh, beyond the horror elements, this movie deals with these young mutants with burgeoning abilities and they can be insecure and angsty and growing pains and all that. So you know, everything that young people deal with. So how do you think younger audiences will resonate with your characters? And did tapping back into your teenage self help with the creation of your character? Anya? Mm -hmm. Ooh, yeah. I mean, I think any opportunity to go back to teenage dumb is not necessarily the most fun experience, but you definitely learn a lot about yourself afterwards. Um, it's interesting because I think we all came into this knowing that whilst we were making a superhero movie, we weren't really making a superhero movie. We were making a film about people who were having a tough time understanding themselves and figuring out their place in the world. And yep. so to make it a bit more cinematic, we added powers. But I do think There's. any teenager <laughs> that's going through, you know, as you said, the growing pains, so trying to understand where you fit in, you're no longer a child, but like, what is this weird adult world? Um, I think they'll definitely connect with it. And then we have powers, which is really cool. So, you know. Yeah, I would, I would say too, it was really made for, for, for teenagers who are outsiders, people who feel out of place uh, and who are going through a tough time in general. I sort of always say I make couch <laughs> movies, which are like, when I was a teenager and I was really depressed, I'd have like a certain movie I'd pop on and go lay on the couch and made me feel better. Yeah. So it's like these kind of movies are those kind of movies where hopefully they'll be your friend. And what to was be your movie? Fair, but, oh, sorry, you go. No, I'm no. It's embarrassing, and I'm not going <laughs> 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 to. No, there are always romantic movies with romance in them, the romantic comedies or things like that. I'm not going to admit to any of them. <laughs> <laughs> Annie, what were you going to say? I, I was just going to say that actually the setting really helped with that because it did feel like we were kind of in a high school slash college experience where we were all going to the same place every single day and then going back to like dorms so it, it did was, feel like it was like a college experience but where the set that you were on somebody had hung themselves there maybe 40 years <laughs> before <laughs> See, there, i've shot in too many like abandoned mental hospitals i'm like really way too chill about the whole situation but, um, um, you know. i remember in the attic that we shot in on the first day that was a place where somebody had hung themselves they said yeah. it might even have been <laughs> more than one person uh because the place that we and shot in was, was, was 150 wall. years old 
yeah, yeah, yeah. There was some weird, yeah, yeah encryption on the wall. Someone yeah. there, like, yeah, death. Was it a death note? I, I don't know. It also felt like quarantine. We were quarantining in the in the hotel all together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, you guys were prepared. prepared. We've been quarantining <laughs> really since we made the movie. <laughs> but another nice thing is we had that two week, you know, we had a uh, two week rehearsal period, but we actually got to spend it. We, sh we, you know, we rehearsed in places that we necessarily didn't shoot as well. So I don't know. It kind of, we were, I remember like we blocked a lot of things out and did things like that, which, you know, made again, just made it kind of feel very familiar. So, yeah. Kind of helpful. But you got, you yeah. guys mentioned that you were kind of holed up in this hotel filming. When you think back on that experience of all that time you spent together, what sticks out to you most when you think about like your downtime on set, Charlie? Um, yeah, really to togetherness. I mean, you have no choice but to, you know, hang out with the <laughs> <laughs> And um, it's a long period of time as well. I mean, we were there, I think it was like three months, you know, all, all in all. And there is really nothing. I mean, sorry, Norwood, but there's nothing <laughs> <laughs> lot to do in Norwood. Uh, Not a lot to do there. Yeah, but, but it's also entertained though. To be fair. But yeah, ju I mean, just had activities. Um, yeah. yeah, to go tie in with the film, it, it really made us bond. You know, a, a, as as people like and and learn about each other like like these characters do. Um, so kind of you know it was like life was meeting art in the same in the same moment which was nice yeah and i mean the movie's very much like you know blue comes to this institution and sort of makes everybody through her powers open up so i guess like that's sort of the same thing that happened when we made it and everybody became friends and all that what did you guys do like what was your favorite downtime activity <laughs> We all got in the car when Charlie was driving the five of us, and uh, <laughs> the last time Charlie drove the car. One the last time. time. I, I had just learned to drive. Um, well, I, I, I literally just got my license. And, and he's never, British. You were driving I, I, on the I'm side. I'd never, uh, I'd never driven at night before. You know, you do all your lessons in the day, and uh, I, we were driving back. I decided to take everyone to the cinema and try out my driving. <laughs> but I, and I was driving at night and I, I was like, hearing man, the lights of the car are on. <laughs> the lights, no, are, the lights on. are on. I was like, I can't see anything. <laughs> <laughs> the storm started like just warming on top of us like, a, I don't know, like Anya's limbo or something. I'm like, oh. did, I, did I make up the fact that we went to see Baby Driver on you the day? No, we went to Yeah, yeah, yeah. we, we went to Baby a race movie, and then Charlie couldn't switch on the lights of his car. <laughs> okay. You did great, babe. I did, I did. I did. You did great. <laughs> You're very moral support, I feel like. <laughs> well, we, we have to take a moment to celebrate the romantic relationship we're getting between Blue and Maisie's characters. Um, <laughs> Mm. Can you guys tell us about your connection, not only as characters, but as actors? Like, tell me about your screen test. Tell me about your audition. Yeah, we yeah. met um, <laughs> at the screen test. <laughs> and, um, I don't know, maybe like two or three months before we shot the film. Yeah. And yeah, I've done a couple of screen tests before, but this was like the first time I had to like kiss us stranger in the screen test and like that's always just like a pre-covid <laughs> pre-covid <laughs> but that's like a nerve-wracking experience but hearing it from your point of view blue it sounds like it was kind of strange because <laughs> and it was yeah it was also I mean... probably strange the way we did it i mean i had them lay down on the floor together just like as if they were looking up at the stars like they are in the movie and did a two shot of them and everything so we did sort of really act that scene out the way we did when we shot it yeah yeah it was I was I was nervous, yeah. <laughs> did, did you feel, did you guys feel a little magic when you kissed? <laughs> I think I knew I got the part as soon as we kissed, you know? I was like, yeah. that, that was real. That was real. <laughs> You're like, if they made me kiss Maisie, I know I got the part. <laughs> yeah. No, it was, it was definitely a really, like, cra like, I watched Maisie's show, you know? I was like going to this audition all the way across Easy, town and I'm just like what show were you on? <laughs> it was just like it was like a really I I like couldn't believe that I was even there when it was happening you know but it was like um yeah it was it was it was fun but and then our whole relationship between our characters and then us as friends on set like 
um, was really amazing. Like it really got me through making the movie, like our friendship and like that uh, character relationship was really important to me. It was like probably my favorite part of Danny, honestly, yeah. is like her, yeah, relationship with Rain. If people ask me like, what, you know, what are you most excited for people to see? And it's like, I, yes, all the cool visual effects and the big fights at the end and all that. But like just seeing these two girls under that dome looking up, I think is really cool to see people doing a movie. Uh, so I don't know. I'm excited for that stuff just as much as the, uh, is the action and the Marvel stuff and all that. Yay. Love it. Um, okay, I want to get to some questions from the press. The first one comes from Silas Lesnick from Movie Bill, and this one's directed at Blue. Is there anything that you have continued to learn or come to realize about your character during this longer than usual period from production to release? Yeah, I, I think that's actually really weird because I feel like I did uh, realize a lot of things about Danny, about my character, like after filming. I definitely realized how um, close I was to her as just a person, um, which I think I kind of didn't really realize that while I was filming. And then when I left and I was able to look back at it and think about Danny, think about playing Danny, I like suddenly it all like came to me and I was like, oh my God, me and Danny are really the same person. Like, um, which is kind of weird because I think usually you feel like you get to play a character. So I think it was very strange for me to play someone that was so much like me. Um, and that wasn't uh, really something I realized until a lot of time passed. Um, but it, it definitely, honestly having like, what is it three years? Yeah, three years passed since making the movie. I've definitely, yeah, grown, I think as an actor, as a person. And if I would play Danny three years later again, I think um, it would be interesting because I feel like she would still be just like me and she would have come into her body uh, for the first time. And like, I think she's a very uncomfortable teenager um, and I was probably uncomfortable then, but now I'm, I'm not at all. And like, I think Danny wouldn't be either. Like as she had like her new friends and her new relationship and, you know, yeah, overcome a lot of things. So, yeah. Would you want to play her again? Yeah, I think so. I mean, of course, like, I mean, she was, you know, the first character, real character I ever got to play. And um, I think like she's really close to my heart or something like she would be really fun to play her again as an adult you know like Danny is an adult now and not a teenager like maybe her powers aren't all you know negative and bad maybe she can like you know make some dreams come true not just nightmares I don't know. <laughs> so that would be cool um does anyone else have any like realizations they had about their characters after the fact yeah, I think like somewhat si like similar thing. I think at the time um, uh, we were all a lot younger and I, it's only three years, but I feel like at this time in our lives, like you just do change a lot. And at the time I was just like very uncomfortable. Um, and like when I was playing Rain um, and like I have on the wig and like the tatty clothes and like it made me feel like as an actor like very uncomfortable and it's like hard to do your job right when you feel like unattractive or like whatever it is like you can't get your ego out of the way you know and I think for me like looking back now it's like actually that was all perfect like to feel that way and to feel uncomfortable in the clothes and the like that's who she is like she she isn't just born with like every ounce of confidence and so yeah it was like something that I was really fighting at the time but actually it it like looking back I'm like wow you're really like uncomfortable but it it works for for the role I guess yeah it was really interesting to see their work because when when uh like when when you see when you read the script or when you see the story you can see how many teenagers I think are going to connect with each one of them in different ways maybe someone is going to connect more to Maisie's character someone mm -hmm. is going to connect more with Charlie's character or Anya's because I think it taught with the movie and, and Josh does that in a brilliant way talks a lot about young people and and going through their lives being mutant or not and the X-Men kind of have that 
you know, uh, metaphor of, of talking about being accepted. Yeah. And teenagers, they go through that. There's a different moment. Like, like we were saying, we shot this three years ago and they changed a lot from that moment that we're shooting. And I think a lot of people that will watch the film either are gonna remember them, how they were, or they're gonna see themselves if they're around that age. And I think the movie is really cool because of that, because it talks on subjects in a great way that is entertaining and all that, but it really goes deep into these this, this kids, young adults that are figuring out life and going through these feelings. And like, like Maisie just said, like understanding their body and their role in the world. So I think it's really mm. nice to have, you know, an action film and, and, you know, entertaining film, but that deals with this kind of situations in a nice way. Mm. Yeah, it definitely yeah. is more uh, character driven and driven by performance than typical movies in the genre. Yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say, I relate to this discomfort that Maisie was talking about too. I think all of our characters have some sort of physical discomfort coming either from our powers or just from, you know, growing pains. Um, I was that was our code that. name. Growing pains. Growing pains. Yeah, but you know, like like we were talking before about like the 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 love for these characters. I, I was feeling like you know I have to live up to a role, and uh, I should have used that fear, that insecurity, for Roberto because he is trying to live up to a facade, to um, a pretend uh, confident seventeen year old who's actually just like craving love and and is really sensitive um he just can't face that because it causes so much pain so i think we can all relate to that discomfort great question silas okay um we're gonna move on to jamie philbrick from we live entertainment um and this question is for josh can you talk about your love for uh chris claremont and bill sinkevich's demon bear storyline from the comics and sure. why that was the right story to adapt and bring these characters to the big screen with well, I mean, briefly, I wrote this with uh, my, my very best friend in the world. We've known each other since we were little babies. Our moms are best friends. And we grew up in the 1980s reading Marvel comics. And uh, I still vividly remember to this day seeing the covers of the New Mutants comics that Bill started working on these Demon Bear ones because they did not look like any comic book covers I'd ever seen before. They were painted. They were impressionistic. They were had a more slippery, surreal look than typical comic books do. Um, I just never seen anything like that before. So they really captured my uh, imagination. And I thought about them really for years. I remember being in uh, LA when I first moved out in like an apartment, like 10 years before I ever made a movie, I had a stack of New Mutants comics. And I was like, eh, maybe one day. And I was lucky enough uh, to have made a movie for Fox that was successful and uh, went and begged them to, to let us take a crack at uh, these comics we liked when we were young. So it all goes back to... Uh, almost all these projects that I ever do go back to my childhood or go back to things that uh, I feel real passion and love for because that's really all that can sustain you through uh, how long it takes to make something, get it made, shoot it, write it, edit it. Uh, if it's just something that you love, I don't know, fleeting, I don't know that it can hold you for the length of time it takes to make it. Uh, so we try to pick things that we have deep, passionate feelings for to hopefully connected to childhood because those things will stay passionate about since then be able to continue feeling that way now. Um, Charlie, I like how you've gotten progressively further away from this. <laughs> no, it's cute. Um, so this next one is from Josh Weiss at Sci-Fi and I'll ask this one to Charlie. Um, did you reference specific issues or story arcs when you were preparing to play your character? And if so, which ones did you read? Um, I mean, yeah, just like Josh was talking about, I mean, you know, this movie, you know, came from the Sinkivix, uh Demon Bear franchise, so, um, saga, so, so yeah, um, I mean, Henry had like all of them in his room, um, so we'd, we'd just kind of trade off. Nerd. <laughs> <laughs> I, I kind of was like, wait, really was like, geek, oh. that's it. <laughs> <laughs> like a hundred comics he was like yeah yeah i'm preparing i was like oh okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh that's what you're doing <laughs> uh but no yeah i looked at them um you know you're trying to find as much information as you can about your character and obviously you've got the script um you know which gives you a lot but you know going you're trying to find as much as you can um you know but it's also a com you know the comics as much as they give you kind of the shape of these characters and I mean who they are they don't give you that kind of inner I, I never found we were looking at the comics you know 
that I kind of could get a full fledged character. So it was, I would say it was, it, it was you know, it's, it's exciting to read, but I really kind of was, for me at least, preparing, like was definitely kind of looking more at pulling from the script itself than necessarily the comics. I mean, the comics helped with like, you know, look and style, but yeah, we're yeah. making a different piece of, uh, uh, you know, this is, this is a film, so you need to make these kind of characters. Real. Out. Yeah, and real. Mm. And that, that, you know, that was conversations that we'd had, you know, uh, me and Josh, and it was kind of, yeah, again, looking at the script and then just going with instinct and, you know, you're playing this character, so you've got to give a piece of you to this character and kind of finding what piece of you you want to, want to give to it um, is kind of how I kind of came up with Sam and um, also just this, this idea of power and when you have something inside of you that is, you know, manifested uh, and, and, you, and, you, and you're trying to, you know, learn how to control it, but how that plays with your emotions. Um, so yeah, there's a, a lot of things really it wasn't just like one or the other. Right. Well, Anya, sim similar question to you from Don K from Den of Geek. Did you delve into the comic book history of your character or did you mostly work off what was in the script? I dove in for fun. I have to say it gets a bit confusing as to how much time <laughs> Indiana spends in limbo and how old <clears throat> she is. And she's, I mean, which to be fair, I kind of like. It makes me, she's tough to understand. I love it. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I, I dove in for fun. Um, and then like Charlie said, you know, you have to kind of go off the script because even if in your head you're like, oh, I pulled this bit from a comic book, somebody that hasn't read the comic, when they go and see it, they're not going to understand it. So you have to yeah. sort of present all the information out that you have in the script and on the page. Um, but that and we did a lot of, uh, yeah. oh, sorry, you just made me think. I mean, we, we also, we, we used everybody's original backstories from the comics, but we really did go out of our way to ground those stories and make them directly related to where the character was emotionally when you're with them in the movie so eh, what she said i think is is right it's like the comic only goes so far it was certainly incredibly helpful to us aesthetically and in terms of choosing shots and making it look a certain way and using bill's designs and bill's uh character designs because these comics were cool because they didn't wear costumes in them uh for a lot of bill's run which we were inspired by that as well and, you know, when you have Josh as your director, like you just have a walking encyclopedia of anything you ever need to know. So, um, you know, it's, it, it, it's fun because you can read the comics at home and it's like homework, but you're actually just having a great time. And then if you're ever really stressed about something on set, you can just be like, Josh, what do you think of that? And he'll just break it down for and you. And then I'll get stressed and I'll be like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we, we had, we had the, the perfect director for the job and he wasn't going to yeah. Um, mess with characters that he's loved for such a long time. So. Totally. Yeah, I'd say they're very much like the characters in the comics, but I'd say we had to make sense of a very convoluted uh, Marvel history that a lot of these characters had and their entanglements with other books and everything else. Uh, Lockheed would be a prime example of uh, we made Lockheed much more tied to her directly in terms of her backstory and everything because the way she gains this uh dragon in the comic is you know this dragon came from space kitty pride got it eventually it really became uh Ileana's. comic. i have to say i love kitty i think kitty. yeah she's so cool but you know for us it was just like i don't know how to do the space backstory <laughs> 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 well, uh, yeah, that's why we chose not to focus on a character like Magma, because it's like she comes from like an ancient Roman world that still exists in the Amazon somewhere now, and it was like, yeah, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> Build it at the bottom of the field in the hospital. <laughs> exactly. We, yeah, we, yep. That's what would have happened. <laughs> Well, uh, last one from Tina Pollock from Disney Digital. Um, since this movie appears to have a foreboding theme, what were some of the ways you guys lightened up the atmosphere on set beyond getting in the car with Charlie? <laughs> I mean, we, I just remember everybody laughing a lot the, the whole time we made this. These cats are all really funny and like gagging on each other. And once they really knew each other, they could poke each other in ways that were fun. You know? I just remember Maisie and Blue dancing. All the time. There's a lot of dancing, a lot of singing. A lot of dancing. Yeah. Anytime uh, Elise ran, you know, we would. <laughs> 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 
What's the, what's the Ron Alisi? It's a, I don't know why this from a, when we started doing this. Monica, see scene. the movie. <laughs> <laughs> This was her homage to the T-1000 in T2, uh, Robert Patrick's character. Uh, you know, it's very much like exactly. Robert Patrick does. <laughs> I thought it was more happy feet, but sure. <laughs> uh, Just to make clear, when happy. people watch the film, I love do you. not run that way, okay? That's not how I run in real life. <laughs> no, 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 this was a, this was a character choice beautifully. that she made. <laughs> He's like a athletic person, I know. I love it. Well, I want to thank you guys all so much for being here today. Um, I'm sure everyone wants to know, August 28th is the current release date. Is this the one? Does this it is, This is the release it's date. Fun. It is coming out. Uh, <laughs> it'll be in every theater that's available to screen it. That'll be 80% of U.S. theaters, and that'll continue to grow out over the however many weeks after it opens. Uh, it'll open internationally, uh, and then eventually you can see it at home. So... Uh, it is finally going to be available for people to, to actually talk about having seen it and not just writing about reshoots that we never did. <laughs> <laughs> I was starting to think it was a myth. I'm not going to lie. I'm glad it's coming out. <laughs> it's a real movie, you know, guys. It exists. Yeah, it's there. It exists. It's real. <laughs> well, congratulations to everyone. And thank you guys so much for everyone that tuned in to watch. That's going to wrap up the press conference for now. And yeah. thank you guys so much. Goodbye for thank now. You. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. If I can have all the press please exit the Zoom meeting, that'll make things a lot easier. Thank you, everyone. And that's a cut. Yes, cut, please. Here we go.